was like one of my good buddies so almost always i'd be with him on the way to meetings so i was like hey man i'm never late as long as i'm with you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah well, i was the president so i was never late uh, who among have you um so only mark has been a president out of all of us right i've been a, i've been a president vice president uh warden i uh, I, I preferred heckling in in uh so eboard was not for me because it's a little harder to heckle and be in, in a position of power. Yeah, I guess uh, hard this not right now, dumbass. So like, you... oh god, my cat is so stupid. Um, okay, so we're all here. My cat is stupid. My coffee is almost done. Uh, so I think we get this thing on the fucking road. Uh, so how's everyone doing? I'm 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 glad to hear it. I'm glad that everyone had a terrible day and we can play D&D now. Um, so I guess... Uh, crank myself up here. Um, fuck, I don't know. Alright, good good game, guys. I'll see y'all next week. No, um... So, we can do this one of two ways. Um, we left off in the middle of you guys uh well not you guys but um book in combat with the chain demon uh chain devil yeah. excuse me and you have a you have a mind flayer helping you so it can go one of two ways we can play that out or we can just commit to this being the last thing and skip to the vault of dragons i'll leave that up to you I mean, I'm going to kill this thing, I'm assuming. You probably wouldn't have done too bad. So. But we, we, we skip the combat. It's not too terribly important. As okay. long as I can burn down the building when we leave. You're going to burn down a uh, Grohling Manor? Uh, not not uh, the fucking the castle in our villa. Alright, cool. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead I'm and... I'm making an accident. Let me go ahead and write that one down. Um, like a bad and make a stealth roll. Well, I'll, I'll do it for you, but um, okay. Can I give myself bardic inspiration? No, you cannot. Um, <laughs> I know. I, I pump myself up, and that's a nineteen on the stealth roll. So yeah, that's a pretty good stealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so now we need to talk about something. What's that? Uh, toxic hideous laughter. Uh, that's been resolved already. Don't worry. Um, okay. Because whenever you're leaving the house and you look back into the playroom where the children were located, they're no longer there. Just two. Um, you just see two pentagrams on the ground. So with that done. I'm assuming you're meeting uh, back up with the Xanathar uh, with the key? Mm hmm Okay. So, let me uh, think about everything here. I want to get some ambience for myself. Um, so, it's, um, it's roughly like 11 p.m. It's, you know, it, it nighttime has hit the city. And you make your way back to Skullport with the key, and the Xanathar uh, takes it, and he smiles, and he, I'm sorry, it, oh my god, like, I'm, I'm like, out of it, I need to, like, How shake rude. it out. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Um, is, it, is it it or is it they? It's it. It's specific, okay. it specifically is it. It's like, it's, it's, um, it's weird. Um. Okay. But, um, whenever you return, it, uh, accepts the key graciously, and it says, Well, very good now, very good, very nice. Now, you are going to spearhead this. You're going to accompany Nylor, you're going to proceed to the Vault of Dragons, and you are going to recover whatever it is inside. Nylor here will provide the means to do so. In the meantime, and it 
floats the Stone of Galore over to you, you're going to want to attune to this. And you're going to want to follow its instructions to the letter. And what do you do? Okay. Okay. I mean, I follow my instructions. Fair enough. Um, so, let me uh, crank you up a little bit. Yeah, so the Stone of Galore is now in your possession. You are now attuned. Um, and oh. I'm just going to use your wisdom check from before, unless you want to roll one again. Um, I don't care. Cool. Um, so, yeah, use that wisdom check from earlier. And. Snake. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Sorry. Um, I haven't had my ringer on like ages, so I like completely forgot what it was like. Um, so you and Nylor make your way to the Castle Lancer Crypt, and you um, approach the giant stone door. Um, and I was gonna say, Jarolf, Rush, and Jarlaxel are in waiting, and they are in hiding, but they did pass their stealth check last time, so they are undetected. The thing doesn't have. I'm just covering all my bases here, just making sure that doesn't. Okay. So, the first thing uh, that happens is Nihilor, um takes a. Um, and as soon as you guys enter this area, Nihilor resumes its form as a mind flayer, um, and it presents a vial of black-looking uh, liquid. It chucks that onto one of the little red orbs in front of the door. Um, it then takes the little coupon that was being uh -huh. given out at the castle and places that in the third, uh, the second little red uh, thing. And then it produces a small little blue rock, which it wraps its weird tentacly knuckles on. And it starts to play a recording of a familiar fate, a familiar voice, um, singing, uh, your beardy face. Um, and you could swear, uh, it's got, like, a weird, unnecessary harmonica, um, inflection to it, like, you know, break in the middle of it, and you could hear what sounds like a dog, or maybe a wolf panting in the background, but... It's an unnecessary cadenza right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but... Lo and behold, it is a performance of Your Beardy Face. And after the performance is complete, the third little dot... I'm pretty sure... What's up? I'm pretty sure the cadenzo is just a lick, like, in six different yeah. keys. <laughs> but as soon as that finishes, the third little <coughs> dot in front of the door uh, clicks, and the swirling portal that was in front of the door um, starts spinning faster and it becomes more of a colorful blue. Um, and it looks like the way is open. Do you proceed? I know that the answer to most of these will be yes, but I, I, I do have to ask. Who will show you the way? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look over at Jarlaxle and look for a signal. He he's he holds up a finger and he's like, just wait. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna wait. Okay. Um. And let me just check with this. Um. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, but... I'm a, yeah. I'm a I'm a broken man. I'm I'm a lackey now. <laughs> so with that. We tried, dude. We tried. With that, um, the two of them disappear into the portal. As soon as this happens, Jarlaxle makes a motion at it. And um, you see the portal start to slow down, so Jarlaxle makes his way into the portal and disappears we, through it. We go! Yeah, we, Let's yeah, go! Yeah, I'm just gonna run after him. Okay. Like, Come on, Renan. <laughs> I'm gonna jump into this portrait. Alright. Yeah. Uh, so... Let me just get my Vault of Dragons thing set here. Come on, where are you? Gotcha, stop, stop chewing that. Oh yeah, I forgot that you have the, the cat. Love that cat. Okay, we are in the Vault of Dragons, boys. Um, 
I need a, uh, oh, I know what we're going to do. Do the stone temple from uh, Majora's Mask Boys. Well, that means they're hope, because we're not doing water temple. We won't get lost. <laughs> I don't know, man. Stone temple from Majora's Mask is pretty fucking confusing. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> but it's not, It's like I said, it's not water temple. You're right. Dude, I'm a water temple like the back of my hand. Oh, that's new. <laughs> so here's the question of how we're going to do this. The three keys bring them forth. So the entrance. Three age-worn columns support crumbling stone bridges about 60 feet overhead of you. And the ceiling rises of like another 20 feet above those bridges. Um... And set into these two alcoves are 12 sets of double doors all over the place. Um, crumbling bridges above. I'm just trying to get all the important shit. Um, Roman V2. So yeah, this is a two-pronged hallway, so to speak. It's, 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 a, um, it's a hallway with pillars in the middle, kind of breaking it up into a loose two-hallway kind of thing where you can pass through the middle, you know what I mean? Kind of like a, a highway where you can take the median to do a U-turn. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. And there are 12 sets of double doors. Um, Jarlaxle is also remaining hidden while uh, Book and Nylor explore this, but um, it looks like most of these double doors are cracked and worn out with only vague images of dwarven warriors. Um... And some of the ones that are broken look like, um, how to say this, they l appear to be trick doors where the, um, behind them is just more stone. Only two of them look like they are unharmed. So you have a left and a right, uh, book, which do you choose? Book, we got you, buddy. He's muted. He is muted. Hmm. Let me see if he left us a message anywhere. Um. All right, so we're gonna work it like this. I think I know what we're gonna do here. Um. Okay, so Rush and um, Rush and Gerald, you guys are in the entrance. You guys see all these stone doorways. You guys see the left and the right that you could take. Um, They're right next to each other, so it's kind of like, what's behind door number one? What's behind door number two kind of deal? Um, and you guys have Jarlaxle and you have Renair with you. What do you do? I flip a coin. Alright, I mean, that's perfectly valid. I don't actually have a coin. Can somebody flip a coin? Uh, let's see. Slash, roll, head, uh, one is, um, one is heads. And it's okay, so tails. It's alright, so we go do door number two. Alright, you take the door to the right. Um, you guys push open the stone door... <laughs> And it leads you into a, another room that is rectangular in shape. And as you proceed inwards, you um, take a look around. And it looks like the other door led in here as well. Um, on the other I look end at of... my coin. I look at my coin in both sides. Else. Huh. <laughs> and it looks like there is a set of um, stairs. Uh, let me see here. At the south end of the chamber, expertly carved stairs climb roughly 70 feet upwards and the north wall on the opposite side uh bears a old stone fresco and it depicts a bunch of dwarves battling goblins in a great battle cool uh i want to look at that fresco all right make a wisdom save for me god damn it oh wait i'm a cleric i should be good at this I always, I never play wisdom classes, so I'm just like, the time it happens, I just always like the death. Mm -hmm. Um, 
That is a 14. You successfully resist the charm spell. You feel the fresco pulling you very strongly, and you hear the intoxicating sounds of dwarven battle songs and drinking tunes. And you hear the sound of, like, steel on shield uh, as you hear the uh, sounds of goblins screaming in their deaths. But you manage to tear your way, uh, self away from it, and you feel that the fresco will no longer bother you. Okay. Um, so I want to look at it a little bit closer since I can do it so safely now. So it is exactly pretty much as it is. Um, it depicts a bunch of dwarves all in, like, vaguely different armor. The armor doesn't appear to be the focus of the crafting so much as every one of these dwarves has their own family crest excruciatingly detailed on this fresco. And above them appears to be a dwarf in the sky with burning eyes. Um, you can make a religion check for me if you would like. Hey, another thing that I should be okay at. Nineteen. All right. Um. So you, for one way or another, um, know this as a depiction of uh, Gorm Gulfin, who is the dwarven god of vigilance, and he is also known as Old Fire Eyes. Um, he's generally worshipped by dwarves who are stationed at the underground outposts on the very edge of dwarven um territory and are constantly fighting like goblins and other underground things um yeah and it's generally said that uh, to look upon his gaze uh, or for his gaze to look upon you is to know death all right um and as i'm inspecting the fresco does any of it seem elevated or anything out of place that would be basically indicate that there's anything here like physically other than the fresco no it looks like just a part of the wall okay cool so i kind of relay this information and like start to nerd out and be like oh and this is blah 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 and, like just give everybody the oh and by the way uh that's uh to see the eyes is to see death so we could have a fun time boys Jarlax will, um, to see the eyes is to see death. Or that to, seems bad. To meet his gaze, I should say. Oh, to meet um, his gaze. Yeah, that. <laughs> and Jarlax will walks up close to it and succeeds the wisdom save effortlessly. Um, because he has like a plus 12 to wisdom. Um, he looks and is like, well, well. Dwarven architecture. Interesting place to stash your gold there, old Daggolt. Very interesting. Well, I... Don't see any way except for the door, for the stairs. How about we head on up, boys? Let's sure. go. All right. So you guys head up the stairs, bring you to the next area. Um. So you're standing in a twenty foot high um hall. You see three pillars running the length of the hall that are carved to resemble giant warhammers with their square heads pressed against the floor. Um, the west wall bears a cracked mosaic that depicts a dwarf smith at a forge. He's crafting dwarves out of black metal and diamonds. Um, and three archways in the east wall lead to crumbling bridges that you can see um, into that span the entrance foyer that you guys were just in. Um... And make a perception check for me, boys. You guys can both do this. Perception. Let's see where that is on the 24. Screen. 24, okay. Mine was a 19. All right, both of you. Okay, so the first thing you see is that part of the mural on the wall, uh, part of a section of it has broken off, uh, forming a heap of shattered tile on the floor, and it seems to be secreting a black ooze. Um, God damn it. That's Phyrexian oil, don't touch it. So, in addition to this, um, you also just, like, through examining the stonework, and you're just really on your, your game today, uh, Rush, um, at the end of the hallway, as you're taking a look and avoiding the black goop, um, you f notice the faint outline of a secret door. Um, and as you trace the outline, 
Um, it says, uh, let me think here. I open only for the sons and daughters of Moradin. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but that's not me. <laughs> I'm thinking. So you've got that secret door, you've got the goop coming out of the wall, and you've got three bridges. Okay. Um, what do I know about Moradin? So Sons of Moradin, uh, Sons and Daughters of Moradin is a common thing to call, uh, like a very flair-y way to refer to the dwarves as a whole. Okay. Well, I mean, I doubt it's going to work, but I guess you never know. I try to open the door. Um, you try to give it a good tug and everything, and um, you can make a strength check for me. You can make, It's athletics. So if you got good athletics. Yeah, now we're starting to get into the things that I only kind of do okay. And Jeroff, you can help with this if you would like to. I'd love to help. Okay, great. So it's a 18. That is enough. With Jeralf helping... Oh, no. um, and I rolled a 19, yeah. So. That is also enough. With Jeralf helping, and um, Renair and Jarlax are basically cheering you guys on, um, you managed to push open the door. Um, so within, it's a dust-filled room that has... <coughs> seems to be have lain untouched for a very long time. Um, you see a bunch of, excuse me, goodness, mm, green copper urns on platforms, and they're overflowing with coins and gems and all that. Um, and Jarlaxo immediately strides in, and he looks at him, and he shakes his head. These look like old dwarven coins. It's not the cash that we're looking for, so have at it, boys. All right. Yay! Can we check for traps? You absolutely can. Sweet, let's do that. Uh, your perception? Yeah, let's do that. Or investigate, I would say. Investigation, okay. Because you're actively looking. Ten. Ten. You don't find any traps. Good, I'm just going to start scooping up stuff. Yep, get right. the stuff. So, five copper urns. Uh, urn number one contains five tourmalines. They're worth 100 gold pieces each. Mixed in with 200 copper pieces, so two gold. Um, <clears throat> urn number two contains a very warm, very obviously magic ring, uh, along with 10 ordinary gold rings worth 25 gold each. Urn three is piled high with 250 gold pieces. Urn four contains 33 blue quartz gemstones, each worth 10 <coughs> GP. And urn five holds a nine inch tall silver statuette of a dwarf priest of Moradin with amethyst eyes. And that's worth about 250 gold pieces. I want the ring, and then I'll do like, hey, I want ring and 50 gold, and you can have the rest. Do I get a say? Sure, I guess. You oh, hey, Mark, you back? Yeah. You went your separate way. We're sneaking around you. So, um, I will get to you in just a second. Oh, um, I'm... so yeah, you guys, um, and I can total up that gold in a bit. But, um, you slip on the ring and you can make an arcana check at advantage. <coughs> Let's see. I can do 20. Oh, no, that's a d20. I don't want a fucking d20. There it is. Uh, let's see. Arcana's plus 5, so. 16? No. Plus 5. Duh. Sorry, I'm doing math wrong. You're good. Thirteen. Uh, you identify this as a ring of warmth. While wearing this ring, you have resistance to cold damage. And in addition, you and everything you wear and carry are unharmed by temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Yay, I'm warm. You're very comfortably warm. It's like, you know, space heater. You're like... I'm now, I'm now, you know, like, you get into, like, 
I've gone from like the like uncapped swimming pools to like the indoor ones that they keep like temperature controlled. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so people shake hands with you and they go, "Hi, oh, I really have to pee." <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Book, you arrive, as soon as you guys enter through the portal, you, um, you find yourself, um, in a, in a hallway that leads, um, north and south. So, like, you're in the middle of this hallway, and it goes two ways. Each of them, uh, each of them terminates in a turn to the left to the right, basically going in the same direction, just at two opposite ends of the hall. <coughs> it's a it's very dimly lit. There are no torches, but your night vision is enough to like basically carry you. Hello. Hello. Did you hear what I said? Uh oh wait, fuck, that's me. Tyler. Uh oh. Hello? I think we lost Tyler. No, 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 we're good, we're good, sorry. It stopped picking me up for a second. Um, so, here's how this is. Um, book, whenever you guys step through the portal, you find yourself in a hallway. Uh, long hallway, very dark, but with your night vision, you can tell that the ceiling, um, you can tell the ceiling and the walls are actually gilded with, like, gold. Um, it leads north and south. You're in the middle, and both of them terminate in a in a turn, like a corner that you can continue going okay. through. And they both lead to the same direction. It just depends on which way you want to go. You said the ceiling and the walls are what you cut out. Uh, they are gilded, so like they're just lined with they're gold. Gilded. Well, you presume to be so gold. Left. You can't really make out colors. So go left or right? Basically, yeah. Did you say that they both lead to the same place? Um, they both turn, but they both turn, like, in the same direction. So, like, they both turn westward. Okay, I'm gonna go left. Okay, you take the south hallway. And as you do that, Nylor accompanies you. Although deep underground, this vault is lit by streams of sunlight that pour down from the ceiling, catching motes of dust in their luminous pools. Ornate columns support a 30-foot-high vaulted ceiling, which is adorned with carvings of dwarves basking in the presence of their gods. Deep alcoves line the walls, and piled in one of them is a vast golden trove. Out of the dusty gloom steps an aged dwarf, clutching a staff carved and painted to resemble a pair of entwined dragons, one red, one gold. Despite the dwarf's age, his eyes are steady and bright. Well, I wasn't expecting anyone, he says plainly. As you can see, the place is a mess. Perhaps you should come back later after I've tidied up a bit. Hmm. <clears throat> um. Okay, so I gotta play catch up because I ended up failing. Uh. In the middle of things. So we're are we we're in the vault. You are in the vault. Yes. Um, Jeralf and Rush are in a different location. So somebody being here. That's weird, right? Oh, it's very weird. Okay. Spirit Temple. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so is this an old dwarf and he's clutching a very fancy staff? Clutching a very what? A uh, very fancy staff. Is there anything else you'd like I'm to know gonna... about? What's that? Uh, I'm gonna interrogate him. Okay. What are you asking? I'm gonna go, go straight to straight to intimidation. 
All right. Um, what what are you saying? Like, what are you um, what what what's the angle you're taking for this? Um. So I'm going to explain to him where he is, and that uh, there's no way that somebody could be in here. Is that right, lad? Yes. You're totally sure about so that. The information I have, right? Well, would the stone have told me otherwise? The stone does not understand why someone is here. Okay. So then, yeah. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be possible. <clears throat> and I need him to tell us everything that he knows and how he got in here. And if there are others. My boy, you're more than true to here than I am. My name is Barak Klanghammer, and I live here. I take care of this place. Uh, you see, the Delzun dwarves used to live here. Ever since it was sealed up, I've been its caretaker for a long, long time. <coughs> I should be asking you, why are you here? Because it is my right to be here. Oh, aye. It's your right, is it? Yes. Hmm. Boy, unless you can be claiming the rightful reason to be in this place, I'm afraid you're going to have to turn yourself around and leave the way you came. As the caretaker here, I am to keep out anyone who's like you. Well, what exactly am I? You're a trespasser, boy. I'm not here to I'm explain not a myself. I'm not a trespasser. I have the keys. You don't look like any Daggle to me. Look like who? Um, Daggle. You can make a... Eh, no, you don't have to. Um, Dagult Neverember is the Lord of Neverwinter, formerly the Lord of Waterdeep. He's the guy who uh, embezzled the gold that you see here now. Ah, I gotcha. Mackenzie, come on. Lay your head down. He's having a rough time. Yes, I'm having a rough time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, attack him. You're going to attack him? Yeah. Okay, make a attack roll for me. Uh, Disna whispers. Okay. You, um, try to speak arcane words to the dwarf? Mm-hmm. Um... He needs to make a save. Yes, he does. What's your, uh, save DC? First. Um... Oh yeah, sorry, I have 14. your sheet. I have your sheet. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 14. He fails, but he uses legendary resistance to succeed. Um, <laughs> so, as you do this, Barok's eyes glow. And he grumbles. Boy, you just told me everything I need to know. And... Suddenly, this dwarf um, is engulfed in light, and his shape begins to change and extend outwards. It starts to grow at an alarming rate, and okay. it begins to form a quadrupedal shape, and you see two vast wings pop out of the top. The head elongates into a serpentine shape, and before stands a gigantic golden dragon with... um. Nice. The gold dragon has the staff that was held in its hands and its dwarf disguise uh, laid upon its forehead as a sort of like a diadem, like a circlet. And it speaks to you. You had your chance to prove your worthiness, but you are just a thief like the rest. I sentence you to death. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool story, bro. Rush, Jeralf. 
idea. Hi, yes. So, you guys, um, you exited the secret chamber. Um, there's still the black goop pouring out of the wall, and you still have three, um, how do you say, um, bridges. One, uh, two of them are complete, but, like, really shoddy. You can make your way across without much trouble. One of them is broken in the middle and require, like, a decent jump to make it across. Okay. Let me check something real quick. Okay. While he's checking something, I think I'm going to try to travel across the bridge that has the section out. The broken one? Yeah. Okay. Um, make me an acrobatics check as you try to jump across. 21. You you vault the shit out of that. It's a it's a pretty far jump, but you you make it pretty well. Um, and you find your footing nice and easily on the other side. Um, this leads, let me just double check this real quick. Ha cha 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 cha. Um, it leads to like a titanium door that has like um very obvious door handles and everything. Just gonna yell back and be like, hey, there's a big metal door over here. Sorry, not titanium, adamantine. Uh, and I am, I guess why he's doing this so we can kind of, like, save time, like, like, uh, well, as he was doing this, I was ritual casting detect poison and disease on the, the goop. Okay, um, let me, let me think about okay. that. Uh, Lay your head down. Young lady. Um, I'm gonna get mad. Detect poison and disease, you said? Yep. It is... I mean, it's, it's first level, so I mean, I'm not expecting a whole lot, but... It is not poisonous, it is not diseased. Um, but as you're looking at it, you can tell that it's like eating away at the stone around it. Very slowly, but still. Gotcha. Alright, uh, then I'm gonna try... Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to follow the Geralt, then. Okay. Um, make an acrobatics. <coughs> you said acrobatics? Yes, she wants to play too. <laughs> uh, that is She's a about 15? 15 is enough. Um, you make the vault, and uh, you kind of, you kind of do a Frodo. You, um, you manage to like hold your footing at the end of the jump um and you kind of wobble a little bit but you make it to the other side and you can follow Jarrell to the other bit and uh Renair and Jarlaxel both successfully follow you yeah so you guys are poised at an adamantine door I'm gonna ask Renair and Jarlaxel if one of them can check for magic traps oh yes give me just a second Jarlaxel says and he kind of taps at the eye patch on one of his eyes and he looks closely at it. Hmm. Hmm. No, we're good. Alright, I guess we try to open the door. Alright, so it's heavy, but it's not locked or anything. So, yeah, you guys enter. And it contains the following. Um, As you enter the dusty square room, you see four suits of rusted plate armor without their helmets. They're sized for a dwarf, and they stand in the corners of this 20-foot-high room. Each suit is draped in cobwebs and obviously hasn't been um, touched in a while. And then there are glowing room, uh, runes in the far wall, and their inscription reads, A secret never before told will part Dumathoin's lips. Uh, you can make a religion check if you want. <sighs> Is that no. modifier again? Try. I don't know if okay. it's anything. Yeah, I probably uh, didn't do anything. I did not do, not do great. That is a, a nine. Yeah, Dumathoin for some reason doesn't really ring a bell. I got an eleven, but an eleven also doesn't really tip it off. I'm gonna look okay. at Renair and be like, I mean, man. Uh. <laughs> Can you, okay, can you repeat the runes, like what it says, not the runes, the inscription, what it says again? A secret never before told will part Dumathoin's lips. And Renair thinks on it pretty hard, and Jarlaxle shrugs. I don't make it a habit to memorize dwarven gods, he says. 
Um, does does it look around like looking around? Is there anything that would uh, look kind of godlike? Renair, as far as like, I was gonna say Renair. Um, actually peeks and he's like, Dumathoin, if I recall correctly, is the dwarven god of secrets. Oh, well, maybe we just need to tell the secret. Mm. I'm wearing women's underwear. A secret never before told. Um, is that true? Yeah. Is, is Rush truly wearing ladies' underwear? Has, I mean... Has he told anyone this before? Probably not. Gerald's not the closest even... thing he's got to a friend that's alive anymore. Not even the DM. <laughs> <laughs> this is lame, but yes. Um, I was expecting, like, cool secrets and shit, but alright. Um... I mean, I can tell a real secret if you need me to, because I guess I, well, I haven't told anybody, but... Um, a trapdoor flips open on the far side of the room, uh, leading to a uh, stone staircase that descends downwards. Um, Rush, you see this, but no one else does. I, Geralt's just gonna look at Rush and be like, well, I guess it's not true because it didn't do anything. Uh, okay, weird, fine. but okay. Jarrell's going to think about it for a little bit. He's going to look at Renair. And be, well, I don't know if that would work. So, can I metagame for a second with you, DM? Uh, sure. Would, would telling Rush that I'm part of the Harpers be a secret that I have never told anybody? Because I haven't told people, but people know. Does that make it a secret? Well, I mean, it's a secret between me and the Harpers. It shouldn't, but I really want it to be known between the two of you, so yes. Okay. <gasps> you bastard. Uh, I'm gonna look at Renair and be like, sorry. And then I'm gonna look at uh, Rush and be like, uh, Renair and I are part of the Harpers. And Renair looks disappointed, but he shrugs, and Jarlaxle claps. He's like, I knew it! And Rush, just in, like, full, like, Doom Raiders regalia, will be like, oh, yeah, I'm part of the Doom Raiders. <laughs> he's got, like, he's got, like, a pennant. It's like, <laughs> I'm like I, I picked up on that. Oh, you mean me hanging out with all the Doom Raiders gave it away? <laughs> uh... Something like that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for this entire module to build up to you guys hating each other over this, but <laughs> I think this is great. Um, and the trapdoor flips open. Um, cool. Jarl Axel. Um, oh, look, the, the door opened when you said the thing. Not when I said the thing. Mm -hmm. And Jarl Axel and Renair say, see nothing. Maybe I'm not wearing women's underwear. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at me like, sure. Um, Jarl Axel looks up at it, and he's like, alright, I get it. I have never loved another man or woman in my life, but Tiefling Lass comes pretty close. And, uh, he looks over in the side, and he can tell that the door is open. Renair, um... Let me think about Renair. Hmm. And he looks at it and he says, If I had my way with the gold, I'd spend every last bit of it putting my father somewhere where the sun would never touch his face again. And the door opens. For all four of you guys to go through the trap door. Like, Still looking at me like, oh shit! <laughs> is that is that like a dark thing, like where he doesn't have to work, or like uh, where the sun don't shine, like fuck him kind of thing? Like in the oubliette. Okay. All right. So yeah, you guys have. Oh shit! Yeah. You guys. Yeah, that's not very Harper esque of you. <laughs> well. You know, long time differences. I've been Daggled Never Ember's son for longer than I've been a Harper. You were supposed to help the Harpers and not become one of them. Shut the fuck up, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
So yeah, you guys um, can proceed down this trap door if you would like. Yeah. So the yeah, two let's go. Two of you guys with no dark vision, um, you just you guys descend into pretty deep utter blackness. Um, Shit, that's not good. Uh, as it gets darker, can I look around to see if there's an unlit torch? Well, as you guys get lower, um. And I'm no. just going to keep casting Sacred Flame repeatedly. <laughs> throw it. Cast, throw, cast. Throw. <laughs> well, as you guys descend, uh, no, there aren't any torches because this place was inhabited by dwarves. Um, but as you get lower, you start to see what appears to be firelight in the distance, um, illuminating what appears to be a two-sided hall. One way leading cool. north. One way leading south. That is uh, how and two sided did... halls usually work. And then Rush breaks the fourth wall and says, You want to make Tyler hate his life even more? Split the uh, party. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, Geralt will just poke his head out and look both directions and see what he can see. So, whenever you poke your head out of the first direction, you see a large golden dragon. Uh, you see its hind legs. Um. As it speaks to someone, and it says, I sentence you to death. Oh, I'm gonna pop my head back in and go, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> what's, in, what's the other way? Um, if you pop Here. your head in the other way, you see the dragon's head, as both of these hallways lead to the same location. Oh, no. Oh, that's really not good. Booker, you so I recommend we... Oh, I mean, what were you gonna say? I'm going to look at Rush and the rest of the gang and be like, so I recommend that we go to the side to the back of the dragon. Uh, awesome. ...amount of gold coins. Um, but yeah, um... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Book, are you still with us? Yep, I'm here. Alright, so, um... I'm going to roll your initiative real quick. Yeah, I, I win. Uh, you oh, do actually roll pretty good compared to Nihilor. Um, yeah. And then Oranax. Um, wow, damn. Okay, so it's going to be you, Nihilor, then Oranax. Um, so, right. go ahead. Uh, I'm going to cast Darkness on the Dragon and back out of that area. Okay. Um, let me see. Darkness, 5th edition. Uh, darkness with dark vision can't see and non-magical light. Okay, yeah, so you just, like, cast <coughs> it on the dragon's head? Yes. Because it's, like, 15 foot, so, yeah. It's a 15 foot radius. Okay, yeah, you do that, and you back out to one of the hallways? Mm -hmm. Alright, high or low? Uh, low? I mean, I like, I back out the way I came. Well, I know, I'm just uh, deciding something. So, you back out the way you came, and as you do that, um, you bump into, in the firelight, uh, a particular water ganasi, and the dark elf that is standing next to him in his fancy hat. Oh, hello! Fancy running into you again. Oh, fuck. Hey, dragon, I, I told you what you're the... looking for. <laughs> I told you we should have gone to the side with the, with the tail, not the front. Man. The enemy of the enemy is my friend. Maybe we we get this dragon to fuck this cat up. Wow, I really thought that was gonna go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this cat literally fucked up my one chance. For for my second trick, I cast blindness on Rush. It is <laughs> it is still your turn, so that's not gonna happen. You've used your action. Uh, so let me um Rush and Gerald give me initiative rolls. Uh I already rolled it. It's a fourteen. Okay. I think this is I think this is the one character I play where initiative is not something I'm good at. Oh never mind. I have a plus zero to initiative, but I rolled a nat twenty, so twenty it is. Okay. Well lay your head down. My initiative has a plus four, and I I rolled a fourteen. So, you know, it's just a it's a bad time all around. Oh, I got a fourteen. Okay. So, um, 
a uh, nat 20 trumps other initiatives, right? Even if they rolled higher? Uh, I feel like that's DM it's discretion. It's completely up to you. All right. Um, so what happens is Jarl Axel goes first, and he flips out. <laughs> hey, Mark, you know I don't hate you, buddy. You know I love you very much. No, nah, it's fine. I figured Book's probably going to die at the end of this. Um, just <coughs> going to have to make a constitution roll for me. Um, even even though I, I honestly feel like Book was the, the one that had the best motives for all of this. So, I'm going to roll your constitution. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, so, um, you feel a knife stab you in the gut. Um, f- flying out of, um, Jarl Axel's wrist gauntlet. And your vision darkens super quickly. And you fall down to the ground fast asleep. Cool. Alright, gentlemen. Let's see if we can get... Let's go. Oh. You should be out for a good little bit. Let's go and take care of a dragon, shall we? Alright, by take care of a dragon, do you mean kill a dragon or talk to a dragon? Because there's a bunch of different ways to receive take care. Well, let's go ahead and figure that bit out, shall we? It's a guardian. If we just explain our good intentions, maybe this will all work out. I yeah, like to be that. fair, he's not pissed with us. So... Hey, yo, dragon, it's your boy. So, you guys step out? I mean, yeah. as well. Alright, so, as you guys step out into the main chamber, and the dragon finishes incinerating a mind flayer into an unrecognizable pile of ash, it whips its head around. That's real not good. Out of the Spear of Darkness, and it, like, More interlopers. What place have you in? And then it sniffs. <laughs> I smell the blood of Neverember. And Renair steps out of the, um, steps out of from behind you guys holding the Stone of Galore. And he looks up and he says, Oranax, I remember you. I remember everything now. My father brought me here when he left the gold. It all makes sense now. And Oranax nods. Um. Young man. Your father entrusted this great wealth to me. And it is my duty to guard it. No matter who has come petitioning for it. I'm afraid I can't let you leave with this. And Jarlaxle interjects and he's like, What if we intend to return it to the fair city above? So, uh, they could deal with it. They could deal with a little bit more charity in their lives, I'll tell you that much. Especially with how uh, my compatriots have had their run of the place. No offense, boys. I was going to be like, okay, rude, but yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I mean, the only none cas- of us. Yeah. The only casualties are my friends. Like... Jeroff, li- you literally burned down a building. Okay, listen, nobody died in that fire except for people who deserved it, so. So, um, okay, um, do you guys say anything to the dragon to convince him to part with the gold? Mm. Yes, but let me think. Yeah, uh, I'm currently in the same place. Uh... <laughs> Alright, Mr. Dragon. Actually, no, sorry. What's your name? It's not Mr. Dragon. You may call me Oranax. Alright. Oranax. Uh, so, he- here's the deal. We're all pretty, uh, pretty humble beings, except for maybe, like, that, the fucking cat. But we took care of him, don't worry. Um... We mean well, like, nobody's really, uh, nobody's, uh, we're all looking to put money to good use. Like, you know, like, like, uh, like the Dark Elf said, return to cities, uh, uh, you know, rebuild other parts of the world. Like, we have 
noble intent, mostly. Um, so yeah, just like, just give us some dragon. Make a persuasion check at advantage. Um, that is double advantage, excuse me. You filled two of Oranax's checkboxes. Uh, that is a 21. Excellent. Oranax bends his head. And then it looks up. My time down here has been long, to say the least. And I believe greed has clouded my judgment. You may part with the contents of the Vault of Dragons. And then the dragon is engulfed in light, magical light, and shrinks back down into the form of a dwarf holding a staff. Cool. All right. So it's... Um, so it is two alcoves of 500,000 gold apiece. Um, the combined weight is 20,000 pounds. However, um, I believe you guys do have a bag of holding. Probably. Uh, well, we did. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think unless you... Unless Jarlax well, has another and bag I was of holding. Say, and don't worry, boys. I've got a plan. Prepare for this, you see. Huh? A million gold dragons is quite a lot. So, allow me. And he reaches into his pocket, or like his, his backpack, <coughs> like his little pouch on his hip, and he pulls out a small little black scroll. It's pitch black. It's like Vanta black. No identifying features except that it's like literally a shadow. And then he flicks Vanta it with his... Um, he flicks it with his wrist, and it, uns, uh, and it unravels into what appears to be a black little hole not like a black hole but like a black cartoonish hole yeah like the bugs bunny one where he picks it up off the floor exactly and jarl axel meanders over to one of the um mounds of gold and he plops the hole on the wall and he tells you guys well boys get to shoveling okay cool and so it takes you guys a couple of hours to get all the gold down into the um, the portable hole. But you guys eventually get um, 950,000 gold pieces into the um, into the portable hole. At the end of this, Jarlaxle leaves a good little chunk out. And he points to it and he says, well, boys, uh, deal's a deal, isn't it? 25,000 apiece. Yeah. You can carry it out now or you can put it in the hole. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I'll come what? get it from you. Let's, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's put it in the hole while the dragon still thinks we're giving it all away, you know? Bad enough. Yep. Right, yep. Yep. You guys get the last 50,000 gold into the thing. Um, and you guys are preparing to leave when um, uh, let me think here. Oh yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and as you guys are leaving with Jarlax with the uh, pouch, like his pouch once again filled with um, the black scroll, um, stepping out of one of the hallways into the now lit uh, vault, um, you see a robed man with a metallic arm. Oh no. Oh, it's that guy. I thought you died in the house fire. <laughs> oh, oh no. What you did away with was but a simulacrum. I think you will find the real thing much more entertaining. Oh, well, that's not good. And then Jarl Axel looks back at you guys and he says, Boys, this is going to be a little bit above your pay grade, so how about you go ahead and take this? And he hands the uh, scroll to Jarl. Or, um... Let me... Sorry, one second. Uh, higher low, Jarl. Hi. Okay, he hands it to Renair. Um, Fuck. <laughs> Oof. 
do good things with it, boys. And then he draws his rapier, and you hear the uh, a click on his wrist um, as the dragon turns back into a dragon. And they go off to uh, start a fucking super awesome fight with um, with Manchun, which I promise you guys it's awesome. Um, but in the meantime... Mm, all the good fights happen off, scene, off screen. <laughs> in the meantime, um, you guys... Uh, can lead through the other hallway, which brings you to a uh, book. Is he still passed out? He is still dead asleep. Oh, we'll we'll right. grab him. We're not going to wake him up. But I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna gonna to pick him up and throw him over my shoulder and carry him with me. Okay. And you guys are able to make it to the entrance of the Vault of Dragons. Um... And you guys make it on out. There's no one waiting for you at the end of it. Holy shit. Um, okay. What do you guys... Um, like, what do you guys do? It's nighttime. Um, it appears uh, Jarlaxel and... Um, well, actually, oh shit. I forgot to make the most important role of the fucking game. <laughs> so You're not going out yet! Yeah, so as soon as you guys make it to the entrance... And you're like making your way out, Gerald. You feel the portable hole being sneak into your hand as you make your way through the portal. And as you guys, both of you, um, stand outside, uh, Renair is no longer with you. Wait, why is Renair not with us? Where did he go? You're not sure. But but we have the portable hole with us. You have the portable hole with the million gold dragons. Yes. Renair, what the heck? What the heck? Where is? All right, so I look at Rush and I'm like, Rush, we gotta go find Renair. Why is he not with? Like, he literally wanted this money just as much as anybody else. Am I technically familiar with Renair? Not really. Not as much as well, Geralt is. Well, I mean, familiar enough to do send ascending spell. Um, I mean, we all... saved him, right? Um, well, it says is a creature which you are familiar. It doesn't. I would say you are, like, enough. Okay. Then I'm gonna cast Sending and be like, Yo, what the fuck, man? Where'd you go? Um, you send the, um, the message to where you knew he was, and as it travels, like, you feel the magic extending, it hits what feels like a brick wall. And then I get the little text back, new phone, who dis? <laughs> Well, that's not good. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't really get a hold of him. What do we? What do we do? Yeah, I cut our losses and make some money. I mean, you're not wrong, but now I would feel bad if we just took all of this. Like, I mean, I didn't really know the guy that well. I mean. All right, I have a plan. Uh, okay. We can we can double the money we were planning to make off of just working with Jarlaxle, and we can still do the right thing. <sighs> okay. I have another thought as well. We should cut the cat in, because the last thing I need is a damn cat trying to hunt me down for the rest of my life for cutting him out of a deal he thought he was a part of. Fine. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do with Book is I'm going to take him back to the Troll Skull uh, Tavern and put him in bed and just leave a pile of like 50,000 gold next to the side of his bed and just leave like a note on it that says don't call. <laughs> um. Okay. And then, I guess, uh, and me and Rush will take our portions, and then we'll take the rest. And... Oh, I thought you were saying like basically outbid the the dudes that are like. Does he mean he's working for people? I thought you were like outbid to like make it like one of us, one of us. No, we're just gonna. Like I said, cut him in at the same rate we were at, and then 
cut our losses, dude. Oh, okay. I thought you were. Okay. I don't. I don't care what happens to him in the Xanathar. That's that's a deal he's cut. Yeah, that's sure. All right. So, am I to assume you guys are heading to Castle Waterdeep? <coughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. It's about midnight as you guys uh, do this, but um, as you um approach like the nighttime guards um. After some explaining, um, you guys are let through, um, and you're quickly brought to the throne room of the Open Lord, and out steps a a um, a very tired-looking human woman, um, dressed in like you know queenly regalia, like very nice uh, dress and everything, and a crown on her head with the symbol of Waterdeep emblazoned on the gemstone in front of it. And as soon as you guys walk up with the portable hole in your hand, um, uh, you guys actually, like, um, as you're walking up, Jarlaxle suddenly walks past you guys, and he smells like smoke. But, um, let me see. And make an insight check for me, Jarlf. Let's see here. Insight. Or, in. I'll let you choose insight or perception. Uh, insight's fine. I rolled a 22. Okay. Um, as you, like, pat around at your sides to grab the portable hole, it's no longer there. As Jarlaxle has it in his hands, and he looks back at you and he winks. Lady Silverhand, a gift on behalf of the grand city of Luskin. And he bows, and he hands the, uh, the hole over to, um, to, um, Lady Silverhand. I'm gonna walk up behind him and whisper, uh, if... My, me and my compatriot don't receive our cut. Uh, I hope you understand that there are a lot of people who are going to go very hungry without it. Hush, hush, lad. Hush, hush. We'll take care of it in the end. Don't worry. And Lady Silverhand um, accepts this. And she looks in it and she kind of like unravels it and kind of pokes her head in. Very unqueen-like, by the way. She doesn't act very um, super formal or anything. She closes it. Jarlaxle, you and I have not seen eye to eye in our correspondences, but I believe we can make do with this gift on behalf of the city of Luskin, and I will be passing this word along to the Lord's Alliance. And Jarlaxle bows and he says, of course, of course, you'll find most of the gold embezzled from the city in there. Minus 50,000 for my friends, and, well, let's go ahead and reward our friends for their parts, shall we? Now, I have it on good authority. These two men were seen some less than savory company as they traipsed about for the lost gold, but let it always be known that they acted with the city's best interests at heart the entire time. So what I propose is a monetary reward and full pardon for their involvements in the conniving, the deaths of the conniving noble families that conspired to take this gold away from the city. What say you, my lady? Full pardon? Uh, Let him walk around. Hey, we didn't kill anybody. You can't, not that you can prove. <laughs> Now, now. Let's not say anything that you regret, boys. And Lady My hands Silverhand. are clean. As a... I find these terms agreeable. Rush. Gerolf. By the power invested in me by the closed sword of... Uh, by the mass circle of Waterdeep, I hereby absolve you of all crimes that you have or may have committed during your time in this city. This offer will only be extended for the past and not your future transgressions, but I trust you to behave yourself while you're in a fair city. Not a problem. I'm leaving very soon. Very well. Jarlaxel, we have plenty to discuss, but that will wait for the morning. The two of you are free to go. 
And both of you guys receive a promissory note for 25,000 gold, uh, gold pieces, water deep currency, and a note from Jarlaxle that essentially says, in very colorful phrase and like turns of phrase that I don't have the creative ability to currently churn out, but basically says, don't try to fuck me again. Don't try to fuck him! Don't try to fuck him! <laughs> Whoa. Alright. Extremely rude. So where do you guys go from here? Hmm. Well, uh, Geralt's really only had one gold this whole time. Uh, and 25,000 gold is a, a small nest egg that he can use to start the, the city of Scornville back. So, uh, he's probably gonna look at Rush and be like, man, it was fun. Let's never do this again. And then, uh, start heading out to go start rebuilding the city that he's from. Okay. Do you, um, do you return to the, to the, um, the inn or do you just leave the city immediately? Like first, uh, like first. Yeah, I'll probably go by the inn and get my things and collect any kind of revenue or anything. I mean, like, we bought this place, so... Okay. Leave instructions for the, the workers and stuff. And do you guys go alone? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sorry, do you guys go together? Excuse me. Oh, yeah, I, I was gonna go back, yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and... Um... Go ahead and make a perception for me. Uh, well, that was bad. 13. Okay. Mine was lower than 13, considerably, so... All right. Sorry, give me just a second. All right, what are your HP totals? Go oh, 48. 48. 48, okay. Um, let me just get some, uh... Get some music. Um, so, yeah, you guys, um, enter the, um, Troll Skull Inn, and as soon as you guys do, um, you feel a wash of magic over you as the now awake book tries to cast sleep on you guys. But uh, you said you had 48? Yeah. Correct. Okay, um, that is not enough. Uh, uh, so that is enough to, um, because he, I rolled out 46, um, <laughs> things. Um, yeah, he tries to cast sleep on you guys, uh, specifically on Rush to begin, but you're able to just barely shrug it off and remain just a little bit groggy. Um, and everyone is gonna have to roll initiative. Fucking book, God dude! Damn it. We literally cut you into that higher deal than we got! got Alright, well I rolled a nat 20, so let's murder book and get this over with. I rolled a 16. Alright, and book rolled a 19, so Geralt. One second, I gotta look up what this stupid sword does again. Rod of Lordly Might. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's the. Do these happen as a bonus action, is what I'm wondering. Yep. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna press the button on my uh, Rod of Lordly Might that allows me to move up to, what, 30 feet or something like that? Okay. Does that put me in range of book? Yes. It's a small attack. Okay, I'm gonna make... Okay, I'm gonna make an attack on him. Okay, roll to hit. I rolled a 19. 19 hits, roll damage. Uh, 14 damage. Okay. All right, and is that your turn? 
Uh, let's see here. Let me think. Yeah, I believe so. All right. Um, book. Um, well, you're muting it. He's uh, typing it. All right. He casts Fireball centered on with the last. Um, he pulls out the Growlhound uh, amulet of fireballs, blood like seeping from his chest. And he launches the fireball on the far end of the room. Both of you guys make deck saves. It's going to just catch to where he doesn't uh, take the hit. Uh, 20? All right, 20 18. on the deck save. 18. All right, that does dodge the worst. And then, un and then uncanny dodge. Got it. Let me just roll the damage out real quick. All right. All right, 8d6. All right, so that is 40 damage even. So that's 20 damage on a dodge on rush. And 10, 10 on Giralf. Cool. Cool. And that brings it to you, Rush. What you got? I'm going to cast Told Person. So I need a wisdom save. Okay, we'll do. That's your wisdom. Pretty good. Um, 17. Yeah, it saves. So, spiritual weapon is my bonus faction. Okay. That is a 23 to hit. 23 does hit. And that will be 7 damage. 7 damage. And then for the dice roll is an 18. 18. Uh, every time I forget to pull up the... This is the last time, probably, I will ever have to look up the, the effects of the Vriska Sorkette die ever again. Um, so let me see. Oh, son of a bitch. Sorry, give me just a second. I have to log in and I forget the password. But I know that 18 does something. At least we have nice, ominous music. Oh, I forgot about this, but okay. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the extra effects on the stupid weapon. There's too many. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's me not balancing shit properly. Okay. Brisk of Soul Cats, Ruby, die. 18. Thrower must roll a d... So roll me a d6. One. Alright. So it hits, and it does damage, but book gains haste. <laughs> You're kind what? What'd you say? Uh, I said it hits and it does damage, but book gains haste. Motherfucker. All right, uh, Jarolf. All right, I'm gonna hit him with the weapon again. All right, roll to hit. Do 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 do. Where is this thing? Twenty two. Twenty two does hit. Roll damage. Uh, I did twelve damage, and for my extra effect for the weapon. I'm going to use the uh, Paralyze effect, so he needs to make a Strength saving throw. Okay. Let me do that. He has a zero to Strength, so... It's a 15 even. He fails. He fails. He is paralyzed for one minute. Okay. Um, we'll make that 30 seconds because he's hasted, I think, but that's not how haste works. Um... I'm just double check that, make sure haste doesn't do any crazy like immunities to paralyze or anything. Can't move or speak, fails strength and dexterity saving throws automatically. Uh, attack rolls against him have advantage, and any attack that hits its creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Okay. Um, we go to Book's turn, but he's paralyzed. And Jarl, uh, not Jarl, Rush. 
Where's what I'm looking for? All right, I am going to cast second level guiding bolt. Hold it. So with with advantage, that will be a seventeen. Okay. Um, that hits. Roll the damage. So do I just roll extra d6? Well, no, magic spells can't crit. Can they? I don't Spell attack. think so. Uh, let me... I mean, it's... Can spell attacks crit? Let me see that. Um, spells can crit, and you roll a damage twice. You rolled the damage twice? Um... Well, well, not like extra damage yeah, die. you get an extra damage because die. this is five d six. If I'm rolling ten, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, let's see. If cleric cast guiding bolt as a level three spell, um, instead of rolling six d six, they roll twelve d. No, it's double. Oh my god! Get hat. Uh, I will cut this easy for you. It does bring him down. Because he has three health left. Well, we're rolling it out though. Because okay. fuck him. I want to know if I can kill him outright. I usually don't roll with the kill outright option. I feel like that's kind of like. But this is PvP. Yeah, let's go ahead and roll it out. Boy, you've been nice to this stupid cat repeatedly. 40, 44. 44 damage. So, that is overkill by 41. Um, and even then, Mark chooses to fail his uh, fail his death saves. So, um, tell me, how do you want to do this? How does your guiding bolt do the job? I'm literally, I'm like coming off the singe of the fireball. I'll be like, oh, hell nah. And I just rear back. And I go full like full kamehameha and just like blast him in out of a out of out of a existence. Oh, so he's like a he's like a how cell like dissipates in the light. Yup. Okay. And after your guiding bolt, um, there's nothing left of Rush, um, in the um. Fuck. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rush died. Yeah, there's um, nothing. There's nothing. That backfires. Rush there's... has got the wings and the halo, and he's doing the. <laughs> he's like he's running on Snake Way. Um, no, yeah. There's nothing left of Book whenever the dust settles, and you swear you smell the smell of rose petals as the dust clears. Fucking, fucking cat, dude. I'm gonna look at Rush and be like, "Hey, you want twenty five thousand more gold? Yo, this dummy, this dummy tried to kill us." All right, and all right. Guys, we can go take books gold and fucking head out. Thus ends. Congratulations, by the way. Um, thus ends Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Um, and we ended up with one one million. <laughs> that's crazy. That's a um, lot more than I thought we'd end up with. Or no, a hundred thousand. Um, yeah, yeah hundred thousand between the between the two oh. of us. Yeah. Mark, you can uh, Mark, you can tell me uh, what you think happens to Book in the meantime. Um, I'm going to look up my epilogue document and tell you guys what happens. I know what happened to Book. I know exactly what happened to Book. Book got eviscerated from this planet. Right. Um, he didn't but, know how to take a deal. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean, though. Um, like afterlife and shit, because afterlife is real. Um. I think you didn't sell your soul. <laughs> well, he's gonna end up in the nine hells anyway. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it, it does depend on who you. Uh, fucking cat, dude. It does depend on who you worship, um, and the way that the way that uh, Mark talked about it, it sounds like he fucking worshipped Asmodeus at the end. Um, but anyway, okay. So let's see here. Uh, when does the good part of this start? God. Yes. Um, let's just go with fucking Dear Beloved, because why not? And so did the chase for the Vault of Dragons come to a close. Though their arrival was subject of little fanfare, 
the actions of three wanderers had changed the landscape of the City of Splendors for years to come. Lives had changed, fortunes had been made, and entire houses had fallen for the pursuit of untold wealth. To the victor had gone the spoils. The City of Waterdeep saw unprecedented growth following the return of their lost wealth by way of Jarlaxle's generous, uh, endless generosity. Guard salaries were heightened, charity projects were funded, and festivals became more colorful and splendorous than ever. Most curious was the surge of merchants and peddlers from the city of Luskin, riding the fall season's gentle winds into Waterdeep's ports in historic exchange of culture from the far north. With the gold beyond its grasp, the Xanathar sulks back into the depths of Skullport. The activity of the Xanathar Guild wanes in the coming days, bringing with it an untold era of peace in the slums above, thanks to Luskin's generous donations. Skullport becomes more isolated than ever, and criminal contacts are, that are not in some way affiliated with Luskin become much harder to find. It is said that any who travel to Skullport hear mad cackling as they enter. With the death of the Lord and Lady of the House, House Castellanter's future falls into uncertainty. Relatives and distant claimants to their fortune all flock to the desolate ruins of Castellanter Villa, all to port soon after, scared off by the alleged haunting of the grounds and the fact that there's nothing left. On the eve of Founder's Day, the twin children Elzarina and Terenzio Castellanter have disappeared from the Prime Material Plane, assumed to be lost to the flames. From their place of torture, in the undying flames of Nessus, the ninth layer of the Hells, Victoro and Amalia Castellanter were forced to watch as their beloved children were claimed by the grasp of Asmodeus. Their twins and their twisted devilish forms were consigned to guard the gates to Avernus for all eternity. With the contents of the Vault of Dragons safely returned to the rightful hands of the city's rulers in the name of Luskin, the mysterious ships under the command of one Captain Zarda Zord departed as quickly as they had arrived, completely abandoning their involvement in the Founder's Day's festivities. Less than a month followed before the historic announcement of Luskin's admission into the Lords of Lyons, taking the seat once held by Baldur's Gate. What was once seen as a wretched hive of scum and villainy was now an international power with real influence over the land of Faerun. No longer content with being a lord in the shadows, Jarlaxle finally reveals his true face to the realms as the real Lord of Luskin, and his dark elven nature is largely overshadowed by Luskin's contributions to the restoration of Waterdeep's wealth. Not content with attaining the old seat of Baldur's Gate alone, Jarlaxle sets his sight on the Lord of Neverwinter, Lord Dagult Neverember himself. His embezzlement during his reign as Open Lord of Waterdeep have been exposed, and he finds himself the target of a political scandal, headed by none other than the One-Eyed Lord of Luskin. The future of Neverwinter's status as a member of the Lord's Alliance grows more tenuous by the day, and Jarlaxle's enduring grin grows wider each and every month. Let's see, cha cha, -cha. Having uh, assisted Jarlaxle in his bid to instate Luskin as a legitimate power upon the Sword Coast, Song and Dance returned to their home city as heroes to their fellow uh, Lusker citizens. They had survived poverty and betrayal in Baldur's Gate, untold hardship during their times with the Inquisition, and the cloak and dagger machinations of Bregan Derth, and for their efforts, they were able to live without fear of poverty ever again. The twins grew apart in the time that followed their return to Luskin. Dance, mm, excuse me, Dance was given proprietorship over the One-Eyed Jacks, the favorite tavern of Bregan Derth in the city, and became a world-famous host known for his flamboyant entertainment style and his weekly fashion shows. Song, however, was never comfortable in one place for very long. Though she was Jarlaxle's longtime lover and confidant, as a non-drow, she would never be able to truly join Bregan Derth. After the thrill of being a local hero and partaking in Luskin's trademark hedonism had finally lost its luster, Song packed light and then set off on another adventure. Some say that she walked into the abandoned host tower of the Arcane and departed the word of Abir Toril, choosing to walk the plains in search of new inspiration for her music. One fateful day found her in the Ladies' Ward in the interdimensional city of Sigil, where she had a fateful encounter with the discerning shopkeeper known as Vriska Sorket. Their extra planar romantic ex escapades were have said to have even made Suni, the goddess of passion and love, blush. Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Manshoon withdraws from the city of Waterdeep soon after Jarlaxle's generous donation, as does the mysterious Zintarim. Only rumors and whispers remain of his involvement, and the mysterious Archwizard moves on to his next plan for world domination, this time much quieter. So let's go 
across the board as according to the um the arrangement of people and by the way i love this um rush is still purple during the final confrontation i just how fitting um so yeah you guys tell me um let's start with gerald where does gerald go from the uh, from here well gerald has his money and the whole time he's just been planning to get back to his people and start rebuilding Scornabel, and so that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna start rebuilding the town from the ground up as like a trading post and start trying to get some uh, business back through the area uh, to kind of strengthen the economy so they can start supporting itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in light of his contributions, I think that the people of Scornabel try to elect him as their mayor do you think he accepts probably uh on a very like superficial level he probably you know uh outsources a lot of the actual delegating and stuff to people but uh just so that he can be out actually working around the town and doing things to be helpful mm -hmm. And um, seeing as the next time we pick up in this setting, well, you know, we might jump around, but the next time we pick up in the setting is going to be a hundred years later. Um, does he, like, ever settle down, or...? Yeah, he just eventually, you know, he, he sets apart a little hillside with a tiny farm and maybe meets a nice girl and just uh, kind of disappears back into the, into the background where he can just kind of relax and... Remember his good times with his buddy Rush and that damn cat. <laughs> Alright. Rush, what do you do immediately after the escapade in the Vault of Dragons? Alright, so Rush is still bent on, like, getting his slice of pie. Like, he is, uh, like, that was the whole whole goal was to, to make something of himself. So he actually is going to, uh make his best efforts and hopefully succeed in purchasing out the rest of Trollskull Alley and turn it into like an entertainment district and like really make it like big and like we're making like fantasy Epcot like it's going to be huge you can absolutely do that with 50,000 gold that's a lot of money um, well it meant like more so if there were people that weren't going to be sentimental and I had to like build like this fantasy Epcot around like a single house or something of course of course hmm I would the say that detective agency is still there. You just kind of like built around it. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, um, I was gonna go down the list of um, NPCs and like uh, give you guys the rundown of like most of like what their whole deals were because there's a secret about Vincent Trench that you guys never learned. But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, I think that this plan succeeds um, like extravagantly. And tell me, do um, do you ever? get your buddy out of prison oh shit yeah no i, I would have done that for sure okay excellent um so with that done um yeah you get a dabble star song out of prison and he's able to track down um one other um one other member of the um doom raiders he's unable to locate schemo who has disappeared strangely but um he is able to track down Tashlin, leaving you three as the last Doom Raiders. And I think that they use, like, their black market connections to help you get this fantasy Epcot started. Um, and before you know it, it is the most visited um, entertainment sector in the city of Waterdeep. And being that this is the city of Splendors, it's a good place to be. Um, and every once in a while... You get an offering uh, for an extension hosted by the Pirates of the Scarlet Marpanoff under the command of one Captain Zarda Zord, who's on holiday in Waterdeep. Offering the branded services of his carnival ships. It's a good time. Alright. Um, I was going to say, and long term, what is... um. How does Rush, like, end up, do you think? I think he's a Ganassi. He can live for, like, over 100 years, I think. But this, like, you know, yeah. long term. Yeah. No, I think... Uh, I 
think what he's gonna do is he's gonna settle in, like make his make his fortune, and like um. And as he begins to grow older and more wise and not quite naive, because keep in mind, like Rush was like eighteen when we started. Like right. he's like he got like real lucky making his fortune young. Like he has no real world experience. He starts to uh, delve into uh, what his uh, his newfound deity actually is. And as he's learning about you know how like the inner workings of the city and how like functions work, he kind of realized like that. Jermon was kind of a piece of shit. Damn. And so he just like quietly like renounces his religion because I mean there's no point more like he's he's made it made made himself like you know like he's not gonna be like outwardly like a hey, fuck Jermon he's just gonna kind of like not practice I guess like he's just gonna kind of fall out of it like he's not gonna like try to actively upset Jermon or like we're church is Jermon we're just not practicing <laughs> yeah. I only go on Easter and Christmas. And I think that uh, I think that this actually sets back the worship of Jeremong to the to the level that Siric had attained like back several years. Um because that was pretty much the best chance that uh that I think it had was a uh, a prominent adventurer who um who had brought it to bear. Um I mean I think it would have been later. I mean I think it might have like done for a little bit but it's one of those things like when he got into like he just kind of let it go quietly and whoever does it does it but it wouldn't have been like he grew old like spreading the good word or anything like it just kind of okay it, it might have it might have been hello yeah hey okay sorry. Sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. it might have been like one of those things that he like kind of pushed through like when he was younger but the older he got he's kind of like oh and he just kind of let it fade off quietly, so it might have got some growth up front, but right. And then afterwards, he didn't like try to stop it, but he he wasn't gonna keep pushing, keep pushing. So yeah, I'd probably set back a little bit, but excellent. And um, and Mark hasn't uh talked to me about uh, anything, but I think um, with no objections, I think that what does happen to Book in the afterlife is that. He um he pursued an act of desire to um connect to Asmodeus and forever extort more um like leverage over others. And I think that book does end up in the nine hells. And Asmodeus is entertained by him. And probably sets him loose as a lesser agent. So to say, like, a lower ranking... Deals. What? Deals Cat has deals. Well, I'm thinking, like, probably a lower level D... Because, like, you know how warlocks can't directly connect to deities or anything? Like, you can't mm -hmm. have Asmodeus as your patron. But I think you can have the Black Cat as your patron. Fiendish patron, as it were. Gotcha. And I think forevermore in Waterdeep, black cats are seen with even more suspicion than was warranted. Um, and I also think that Lady Quill receives a good little bit of scrutiny in her part in supporting the Xanathar. Um, probably stuff that would have come to light and probably loses her job. And skips town, I think. Mm -hmm. And out in the woods in the cottage, there's a lady in her little booklet. She's chilling in the little woodland cottage. Um, and I think that does it for our main cast. Um, so, like, fuck yeah, guys. Um, thank you so much for doing this with me. I think, um, looking back on things, I, um, I could have, like, uh, read better and prepared better in a lot of ways, but... I think the most important gauge of everything is did you guys have fun? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've been looking sure. forward to Dragon Heist for a long time and it was a lot of fun. What was it everything you guys expected? Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Like it's it's always a, like I was I've been very intrigued by the 
do action rather than punch your way through everything kind of module. Mm -hmm. And Dragon Heist is very much that. Right. I think we didn't even enter combat like ten times overall, like the entire thing. And this and is... half of those combat was like with each other. And this what? is se this is session eleven. Um, so yeah, at least twice, maybe three times, we fought each other. So actual combat that we like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that is all that matters to me. I, I think I could have done a little bit better on the DM side, and I could have um, maybe like. Uh, I really think I should have read ahead a lot more because there was like a lot of stuff that I read on in the book that like made sense overall. Um, and I had to like skip out on details because I had fucked up prior and I didn't want to fuck with canon. But overall, I think we did just fine. I think um, I think shit worked out pretty good. I don't want you on my lap right now. Go away. Um, so I'm going down the list of things. Um, one character that you guys never really interacted with was um, Bonnie the Barmaid in the, uh, the Yawning Portal, who is, in actuality, a, um, oh shit, a, uh, doppelganger, like, a shapeshifter, um, which I thought was really cool. Was that the one I pissed off? No, that was an old lady. Oh, okay. Um, that was, that was dead Pam, I remember that. Um, we're gonna Yager Stonefist, <coughs> the Doom Raiders, um, oh yeah, Yager survived, so she's part of the Doom Raiders too, the arm wrestler. Um, blah, 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 Dabble, never remember, nothing. Uh, Renair, um, the reason why, um, the reason why Renair did not follow you guys is because the wisdom save that I've been making you guys do for the Stone of Galore the entire time is a mind control save. The Stone of Galore wants to hoard its information and stay in the Vault of Dragons forever. Oh, that's a good thing I didn't take it because I straight up was about to take it. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly unless like the stone of glorum is ever sought after again with the fact that the vault of dragons is now empty um probably won't ever be breached again so renair probably stays in there until the end of his days which is probably not very long uh except maybe like you know stone of glor whole uh living thing but i think it mostly discards renair um dead pam the very rude uh waitress let's see well, uh, Captain Staggett, guard, Tasha Nefira's alive, Quill, out in the in the woods nowhere. Um, Leaf, Leaf the uh, ghostly bartender, probably stays with uh, with Rush for the rest of the time he does, and he probably stays there for a lot longer. Um, really happy with um, how, as a matter of fact, because of like how happy he probably is with the amount of business the Troll Skull's getting, he probably finally like gets the piece he wants and passes to the uh, to the afterlife like at very long last. Um, we actually did something good. Just a hundred percent like a good thing. Hey, we, it has we, been so long since we have done a good thing with no other intentions watch. other than <laughs> It's true. Across campaigns is usually what can the just... boys heck up today? <laughs> or like it's like we'll do good things, but only because it benefits us somehow, or it's like the best option for us. <laughs> Whereas the the troll skull thing was probably just a good thing that we did. So, I was gonna say Vincent Trench steps uh, skips town looking for the next um for the next mystery, um, and as he steps on the um the the edge of town away from prying eyes, followed by a ton of stray cats, he finally sheds his disguise as a human, um, and reveals himself to be a Rakshasa, a uh, fuck yeah. Um, the, the owner of the tiger's eye, um, is in truth a Rakshasa, a tiger-shaped demon who, uh, kind of like, actually it's less of a demon and more of like a genie-esque kind of creature. Um, but Vincent was really- Oh, he could have hyped us up. Well, he really and truly was just, um, truly not super evil. He just wanted to solve mysteries. <laughs> Which I think is huh. just so funny. Yeah, when you said Rakshasa, I was like, oh, fuck. He was not a good good little kitty. No, but, he, yeah, huh. he just mostly wanted to solve mysteries. It's it's funny. I really love how Vincent... Like, there's a lot of stuff in this book which is clearly made just, like, to be completely non-consequential. But that doesn't mean it has to be uninteresting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Rakshasas are scary, though. Their hands are on backwards. Yeah, no, Rakshasas are, like, fucked, man. Like, um... Like, legitimately, their hands are, like, on, attached to their body backwards. No, I, I know. Trust me. And they usually, like, it's go around shamshers and stuff, and they're just 
total douchebags about most things. Um, let's see. I'm going down the list of all the people that are in a uh, troll skull and like generally around the um, around the board. The old half elf, the lesbian Ganassi. Uh, oh, and when I bought them out, I bought them out handsomely, so they all can have pretty good lives. Right, and I figure some of them might want to even like stay on and uh, like help anyway. Um, yeah, that's fair. Because like you know everything works better if you have gay Ganassi. Um, for sure, the page turner, uh, Schema Weird Bottle, um, one of the members of the Doom Raiders, the um, the Deep Gnome, actually uh, was a plant for uh, Manchun. Um, that I was really leveraging on what um, was going to happen to Rush was if he went to Schemo first, or if he tried to get um, Dabble first, because Schemo would have tried to sell him out to the uh, to Manchun. Um, oh. He was a plant. Uh, Mert the Moneylender, long-time guy. He mostly doesn't do anything. He's still weirdly old. Um, Zardoz was always Jarlaxle, Sir Reginald. <laughs> I think we better leave Lufir to... <laughs> To, like to be a mystery. Sir Reginald is he? He just goes off to his next adventure, man. It oh, could be, yeah. it could be anywhere. He absolutely. He may show. Who knows? He shows up in Avernus. It's just like, how the heck did we get here? <laughs> he just gets there. And he's like, God damn it, not again. She's um, like, Cal, you read the map wrong, and she's like, I, I don't have thumbs. Er? I, it wasn't me. Um, Volo is definitely off running his uh, his own deal. Volo is going is alive, but like a lot of these important characters in Forgotten Realms are like, even though they're human, they all live like several hundred years longer than they're supposed to, and that includes Volo. He's probably going to be around a hundred years later, selling books, um, and skeeving people out again. Um, and the same goes for, uh, for Mert the Moneylender. Um, and Zoblob was just a man who liked selling purple and didn't know that he had a, a back to the Xanathar guild in his, uh, in his store. Um, and I, I really do think that, outside of all that, I think that's it. I think that's, like, all the stuff we had to uncover. Um, you guys did get through a lot of it. Um, I think my What big... about the kids? Um, oh, they're, um... They are forever consigned to the Nine Hills. Their their souls have been sold to Asmodeus. They guard the gates. No, of... what Squidly and oh fuck, Nat Jinx and Squidly. Um, so that's kind of open ended because um, like you know the rat catchers. I mean, like you know they got to be catching rats, but they made um really good money doing uh like working with you guys. Um, and I would say that either they go off to become adventurers in their own right or they stick around Waterdeep and maybe start partaking in the uh, in the carnival and maybe working with the carnival that uh, Rush has set up um, and who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll see them in like later adventures you know what I mean um, I think them becoming adventurers and forging like destinies of their own um, is the most interesting thing a way for it to go I like to think that Jinx ends up becoming like a rogue instead of a wizard. <laughs> he ends up being like the party fighter. Um, yeah, he, and he hits like 15, 16, and he gets that growth spurt that all kids get, mm -hmm. where you just like shoot up super tall <laughs> and get really skinny. Yeah. Magic is for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like I don't like magic anymore. It's for babies. He's um, like, you do the magic, Squidly. I always have to do the magic. Well, I tell you what. Um. <laughs> What do you, like, okay, yeah. like, what do you guys think then? Like, because you guys controlled them for what it was worth. Like, mm -hmm. I, I personally really like the adventure angle. Yeah, I think that's 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 fair. I mean, they they yeah. got some sweet adventure gear to start out. They do. Like, they got some bitch in adventure. Yeah, I don't gear. see Squidly sitting still for very long. Never, never. And the tale, the legend of Nat Jinx and Squidly, uh, can be saved for another day. That'd be a hell of a one-shot, man. Hey, we're gonna run Tomb of Horrors with Nat Jinx and Squidly, and they die in, like, the first two rooms. <laughs> it's, like, the most well, anticlimactic maybe... shit ever. We're gonna maybe go that's that. what we're we gonna need go. to do our one-shots for our new DM. Oh, we're yeah, it's, like, Nat Jinx and Squidly. We're gonna go heck up that shark. <laughs> Obliteros, oh my god. Um, it's the best fucking name. Um, Heckin' Obelisk the Tormentor. That's what I'm saying. 
Obliteros yeah, the Devourer. That's, that's the most metal D and D name I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Dude, um, I can't wait for y'all to hear the names from Avernus. Oh, I believe it. Just... Oh, it's bad, dude. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's um, let's talk about that briefly. I mean, like, you know, this doesn't have to be session zero or anything, especially because Mark is uh, Mark is t tied up in Babyland right now, um, doing important important dad things. Um, so, um, like, not too much in detail, but I always like doing the, um, I always like introducing, I, we're gonna do this, like, you know, the, the, whenever we actually do play, we're gonna be like, I'm Tyler, and I'm playing Blah, and I'm Emily, and I'm playing Blah, um, but I do wanna, like, talk about what we're planning, um, just, like, as a how do our ideas change over time kind of thing, st starting now. Um, so, coming up, I will be playing a Goblin Barbarian again, um, because we're going to be playing Descendant and Avernus, yay, and Josh is going to DM it. Um, I really loved Vanaxa in um, our little Ravnica bit, and I was super sad that it only lasted for like four or five sessions, because Vanaxa is one of my favorite characters that I ever made. Um, so what I ended up doing was I kind of, like, reinvented her into a way less city-bound barbarian, like a more traditional tribal barbarian. Um, so she's a neutral evil, um, wild soul barbarian, uh, infected with, like, Feywild magic and can't help but, like, unleash it whenever she rages and stuff like that. And she wants to be the strongest, she wants to win glory and take over shit that she believes is rightfully hers. And I think she's gonna find... Hi. More than she bargained for. Tyler, can you send me that table as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I have it in my character sheet, too. Because uh, I think I have some ideas for that. Okay. And um, uh, we may make some modifications down the road since it's going to be a long campaign. That's fair. And I, I have no problem with it changing over time. Um, it's just she doesn't get to access it at level one. Um, but thematically, she is still like a magic anomaly. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and also, my girlfriend Emily will be joining us because our other d, &D group has floundered pretty hard. So, uh, yeah, she's joining us so she can actually play again. Um, these boys so generously uh, said yes to her being the fourth boy. Um, so she will be playing a, uh, a Warforged Artificer named Bebop, 83809, Sentinel Unit designation Bebop. Um who is basically they are a wandering mysterious stranger with a gun and they just want to find a purpose uh any details beyond that we'll figure it out um and isaac what are you doing so i am still workshopping names and i'm between two backstories but i am going to be playing uh the unrest arcana uh the revived rogue uh, so, regardless of which of the two backstories I take, uh, the whole gist of it is, is, uh, my dude dies at some point, and he's mysteriously brought back through unknown means, and it's not like undead, it's literally just like straight like, hey, I'm alive now. And because of this, he gains access to previous lives, other reincarnations, and it's a cool little hook because throughout it, like, you basically can just meditate on, like, your past lives and commune with your past lives to learn skills and secrets and things that they have. Like, you can actually go in and, like, during your rests, like, switch out, skip, like, a certain skill or two. Mm -hmm. So you can, like, I mean, obviously, yeah, like, so it's a, it's a cool little hook. Um... I'm between a couple different ideas as far as how to tie it in thematically. Right. Um, but pretty much both of them are going to be pretty tragic. Like, it's, 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 I'm going to tug on some heartstrings. You should really, really play Planescape Torment, dude. Like, I, I can't help but think that class, that subclass, was made, like, by people who played and loved um, Planescape Torment. Because it deals with, like, very similar um, concepts. Um, of like you know reincarnation and like past lives and shit like that and it's like it is fucking incredible how they r run it I, I still genuinely believe it to be 
like one of the best ever made like or ever written stories in a video game period it's like better than most novels mm. i've read um mm. so and it should be like five bucks on like steam for like the enhanced edition right. so i definitely it, it takes a while it's a very long game and it's it's old school so like it's kind of like modern modern convenience is kind of lax but still it's it's right. fucking incredible and it's a story that i will never forget for as long as i fucking live um and again, Mark is still out and, you know, totally justified. Um, hope he's doing good. But um, from what I understand, Mark is playing a character named Roland. Uh, Roland is going to be a grave cleric. Um, sort of like a crusader against... He's going to have him roll into the grave. Oh, God. God damn it. <sighs> My character's name is Kaja, by the way. Kaja the Omen. Um... But yeah, um, and Mark's typing right now. Hey, Mark, what's up? We're talking to uh, we're talking about the characters we're playing next time, and I believe I'm correct when I say Roland is a grave cleric, um, a defender against demonic and fell energies, and just generally a watcher in the service of Helm, um, the god of watchers and defenders. Um, so like a very much like a fight fire with fire type, um, kill these demons and protect the people. Um, and so that's like generally his job, yeah. Um, as a, um, I believe the original concept was a Van Helsing kind of a demon hunter. Um, and I'm really excited to see where that goes to. Um, so overall, yeah, we've got a pretty deft party composition. I mean, we've got Barbarian in the front, we've got a Rogue, an Artificer, which is like a less squishy wizard, and a, a Cleric as well. So it's, as far as party comp goes, it's one of the best we've crafted, I think. Helps that we have four people too. Yeah, and it's good that the party comp is good, because mm -hmm. uh, Avernus is no joke. Yeah, that's, um, and he says he doesn't heal, which is lame, but we'll figure it out. Um, because, uh, I think Art, uh, Emily's Artificer has a heal. Yeah, he does. Um. Now, to be fair, there's a ton of treasure to be found. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I go by the module, you'll be rolling in money. Mm-hmm. We are going to track it probably a little bit more closely than we have in the past. Yeah, that's fair. And I'm sorry that um, <laughs> I'm sorry that you guys like end up with like fifty thousand gold pieces a piece and you don't get to do anything with them because the adventure's over. Um, uh, I bought I bought a whole street. Yeah, you're right. It's about the adventure, dude, not the the yeah, resolution. Be, well, said, fair, well said. To be fair, this party has never really been a big shopper thing. You know, we just of course mostly. I mean. Mostly because, you know, in session one of years and years ago, when we asked for a helicopter, and Tyler made it so shops just weren't really readily available anymore. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, established, I think we established we're not going to have precedent. a healer. Hmm. we got to give you places to buy healing potions and stuff like that. I mean, so. like, Emily's character will have cure wounds, I know that, um, but no, like, cure cantrip, which most cure cantrips aren't great anyway, but, you know. Yeah, I mean that's not gonna help at level uh, thirteen or something right, like that. So. Well, we'll see how we'll see how everyone develops. Who knows? Might take like just yeah. randomly like fucking. Oh yeah, I'm gonna throw in divine soul sorcerer in there with my negative one charisma. No, I think I have zero charisma. It's negative two intelligence. I think I have. Um. But yeah, so I'm like super excited. Like I'm very much looking forward to having all that shit start up. Um. I just wanna make sure um what is uh so what are we doing like are we gonna roll next week or you need do you need more time to prepare no i can go next week i'm probably good for the first two or three sessions like i said i have everything planned out for like the first quote-unquote chapter right and there's like four or five chapters in the book got it so we can probably go for maybe even four or five sessions before we ever even hit Avernus, depending on how long it takes to explore and how long we have to play and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I mean, it just depends on how fast the party goes, but we're ready to go for the next few weeks. Okay. I will let him know. Um, and I was, um, I still am planning on getting some art done of our party um 
that being said, it's going to take way more than like a week. It probably will be a good little bit of the way into the adventure that it'll be done. But um, I have a, uh, a really good artist that I've worked with before and commissioned before, and uh, I'm really excited to see what she turns out. So like the first title card will probably be just the reference art that we're using, but I hope that before we finish I'll be able to put up a, uh, a title card with uh, just special art drawn for all four of our characters. Something um, tells me long before we finish you will be able to do that. Yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we're going from there. I'm looking forward to it because, you know, Josh did a good job with um, with Ravnica, and that's where the infamous uh, Oh Wait, Their Ghost spawns, so, like, fun stories and combat to await. So, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. Um, and I'm just glad to not be DMing again. <laughs> Boy, how do I miss being a player. I miss being a player so much. Um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about or say before we cut it? I don't think so. No, I think I'm good. I think Mark is good as well. So, yeah. Um, once again, thank you guys for playing with me. Thank you for um, being part of this. Don't sit on my lap, you little asshole. Get out from there. Um, yeah. This has been Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and I'm glad you guys let me experience both sides of this. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and I hope you had a lot of fun, and I look forward to playing more. Yay!